This video was sponsored by Brilliant. Hey, happy Friday. This week, we'll take a look at how Android apps are running on Windows. We'll take a look at the first ever electric cars from Foxconn and also a crazy new camera from DJI. I'm afraid we didn't have time to put together a tech knowledge quiz this week because we're swamped with other projects, but we'll get back to that soon. And welcome to the Friday Checkout. <music> Okay, this week was crazy busy with new releases and my highlights include the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, which are packed with so many AI features like simply being able to erase things from photos or being able to translate text inside any app instantaneously or even in camera in real time, that this Pixel finally feels like a real unique value proposition from Google. Apple announced new MacBook Pros with a weird looking notch, all the ports that they have previously dropped, ridiculously powerful looking new processors and 120 hertz screen screens, which I'm telling you are coming to laptops everywhere. Samsung released the Galaxy Z Flip 3 Bespoke Edition to let you customize the exact color combination of your device, which is usually a sign that a product is selling very well if they're willing to take this kind of supply chain risk. And Huawei announced their first major smartphone outside of China in a long time, a 500 euro upper mid-range phone called the Nova 9. And the most interesting thing about it is that it does not run Harmony OS at all, just plain old EMUI, while in China, most devices have already been switched over to Harmony. Not a great sign for their international business. Anyway, all of the new releases can be found in the Crowd app, where you can also see the details, prices, and upvote your favorites. Links are in the description. Okay, our first story of the week will be Android apps running on Windows 11, and they seem to work surprisingly well. Windows insiders can now install apps either directly from the Amazon App Store, which is kind of the official route, but other app stores like Aurora and F-Droid seem to work fine too, and even manually installing completely unoptimized APK files seems to work too. You can see that video playback, for example, works just fine. Our crowd members like Jplexer and Bastian have managed to install the crowd app manually from an APK, which we have done absolutely no extra work on. And yet almost everything seems to work, including WebView. And there seems to be a surprising amount of communication between the two operating systems. Window resizing works quite nicely. Apparently the Android apps actually detect your dark and light mode system settings on Windows and follow it. And Bastian even found that using a digital pen on his laptop screen passed it right onto the Android OneNote app, including pressure sensitivity and all. Super impressive. Sadly, you don't seem to be able to move files between Android and Windows yet. Of course, many apps that rely on Google services might not work 100% correctly. And while performance is definitely usable, it's not like ultra smooth yet. Plus, there are, of course, still some crashes too, since this is beta software. This whole thing runs on top of what is called the Windows subsystem for Android, which is basically an actual Android build, just without the user interface, running in something like a virtual machine on Windows, very similarly to how Microsoft handles Linux on Windows too. I didn't think much about Android apps running on Windows 11 until I basically saw our app working pretty much out of the box without any customizations, then something kind of clicked for me. But let me know down in the comments if you would use them and if yes, how? Okay, my first story of the week will be Foxconn, the world's largest electronics contract manufacturer, announcing a hugely ambitious update to their electric vehicle plants. They demoed their first three models, the C, which is an SUV that should launch for around $35,000 in 2023, the Model E, which is a sedan that is expected a year later, and the T. This is a bus that should go on sale as soon as next year, starting in Taiwan and all under Foxconn's own brand. That is a much shorter time horizon than I was expecting. The specs also sound pretty ambitious with the Model E, for example, expected to have a range of around 750 kilometers and do zero to 100 in under three seconds. There were actual demos with the prototypes at the event and they look, uh, I don't know, a bit generic, but definitely functional. And of course, since this is Foxconn, the plan is to also allow others to use these three as reference designs to build their own electric cars out of. Foxconn wants to provide the platform, the key components, which they also demoed at the show and can assemble it on behalf of companies as well as they had just recently bought a factory from the struggling US EV startup Lordstown and they have announced plans to open their own factories in Europe and more. If you haven't seen my deep dive video on both the backstory of Foxconn as well as their new electric vehicle ambitions, then you should check that out somewhere here. I'll put a link there. And this week they have also announced some pretty ambitious sales targets as well. 
Foxconn says that they plan to scale up their car business from around 360 million US dollars a year to around 36 billion in the next five years, which would be a 100 fold increase and 36 billion would be roughly 20% of their current yearly revenue. Of course, Foxconn is famous for making really bold claims and then not really following through with many of them, so a heavy dose of skepticism is advised, but the company has also released some pretty interesting details. Foxconn says that they built their three prototypes all within one year, which is crazy fast, and this sort of rapid turnaround is what they're promising their module platform and systems will allow others to do as well, with basically three clients named so far. Taiwan's largest car maker, Yulon, which to be fair is not a very big car maker at all, they said they would build their electric cars using these reference designs. Then the US EV startup Lordstown was kind of bailed out by Foxconn, who bought their factory and will take over manufacturing their cars from them too, although not necessarily using Foxconn's designs as far as I know, and Fisker earlier struck a deal with Foxconn for manufacturing too. All three of these are kind of minor car makers, so it would make sense that they would be the ones that would benefit the most from piggybacking off of Foxconn's technologies and resources, and we'll have to wait and see whether the big guys eventually jump on board as well. Now, I don't typically talk about cameras on this channel, but this week we got one that kind of just blew my mind, so that will be my third story. DJI has just announced the brand new Ronin 4D, and it is a weird hybrid that sort of looks like you took a DJI Osmo, gave it some steroids, and turned it into a ridiculously impressive pro filmmaking tool. So the thing in the front is a four gimbal axis, meaning that unlike others, this kind of duck shaped neck can correct for up and down movements too, like when you're walking on stairs, for example, kind of like a real bird. Quack, 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 quack. The camera itself can shoot up to 8K 75 FPS in a ProRes RAW using a full frame sensor, which should mean fantastic image quality and flexibility. There are ND filters built in with nine different stops. And to you non-camera nerds, that is like built-in sunglasses for your camera, where you can choose the amount of shade. That thing on the front there is for LiDAR, so the thing can focus more accurately. You can use the Ronin to track a subject and follow it by rotating the camera too, just like a drone, and it can also show the objects its LiDAR sees as these white little dots in the distance, so a focus puller can choose real time what to focus on and can adjust and easily nail the shot. Also, DJI built a system where the monitor, which is the display that you can see the footage on, plus the focusing and the gimbal controls as well, can live on a completely wireless device with super low latency as well. And the crazy stuff is that all of this starts at just 7,000 euros, which is of course a lot of money, but significantly cheaper than most pro cameras just on their own without the gimbal stuff and anything else. Pretty amazing. All right, and if you're now itching to fill out a quiz and would like to have a good challenge, then I have an equally thought-provoking and fun recommendation in the form of Brilliant. Brilliant is a website and app that teaches you how to think like a scientist or an engineer. And it does so with interactive and engaging lessons designed by real pros that you will both enjoy and learn from. I've always found just passively watching a lecture or reading a book to be inefficient, but with Brilliant you can learn math and science and more and you're really hands-on all the time, solving problems and taking a quiz after each segment to make sure that you've actually understood what you've just read. My favorites are probably the classes on scientific thinking, they are just a series of things that that truly teach you how to approach problems with a scientific perspective that is really interesting. And Brilliant has lots of other classes on different computational topics like computer memory, algorithms, which I especially recommend if you like tech, or many other fields as well. To get smarter about tech and science, go to brilliant.org TFC and sign up for free. And if you're one of the first 200 people to sign up using that link, you can also get 20% off your annual premium subscription. So check it out, happy learning, and I'll see you next Friday. Quack, 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 quack.